National Museum of Wildlife Art is located in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is another way of saying that we're in a valley. Everywhere you look, you can see mountains. The Grand Teton Range, the Gravant, the Snake River Range. This environment is perfect for animals that thrive in high elevations and certain types of people. Rock jocks, ski bums, alpinists, paragliders. In this visit, we're going to look at some of the animals that call this area home and look at some of the ways that they and humans have learned how to scale steep mountain cliffs. And while we're at it, we'll try to answer the potentially harder question, why try to climb great heights in the first place? One of the coolest things about art is that it can take you places you might never go otherwise. For instance, let's look at this painting by Michael Coleman, Rocky Mountain Goats, BC. What are your first reactions? It looks precarious, but also beautiful. It takes my breath away. Imagine sitting where those goats are. How, uh, how would you feel up there? Cold, definitely cold. I think I would also be afraid I might lose my foothold on that wet moss and tumble a long ways before I stopped. Oh, yikes. <laughs> yeah, there is not a lot of room up there. But how did the artist create that illusion that makes us believe that this little ledge the goats are on is so high up? Hmm, it feels like you could touch those clouds. And the terrain is very steep, almost vertical. And there are some patches of snow which are typical at high elevations. The artist has also used lots of cool colors, all the green and some blues that create that cold temperature you feel high in the mountains. Right, and I noticed these two birds flying over here. They uh, appear to be soaring below the height of <laughs> the goats. I don't know, altogether it's making my palms a little sweaty. Okay, here's a question for you. How do you think the goats feel? You know, they don't really seem to share our anxieties. I mean, they look pretty relaxed. Actually, they look like unbelievably relaxed. So true. How can they look so comfortable, like they're lounging on a living room couch when they are thousands of feet up? I mean, I guess they are literally at home up there. Whoa. While Coleman's goats might be at home in the Canadian Rockies, they can live outside of their native range. We might see them in the Grand Tetons, but they're actually an invasive species and can be a real pain in the... The territorial and aggressive goats actually drive native bighorn sheep out of the best habitats and spread diseases. While these two might be cousins, there is no love lost between them. Well, you know, it's no wonder that they end up competing for the exact same habitat. I mean, bighorn sheep and mountain goats are both extremely well adapted to mountaintop living. For one thing, they both have really warm fur, which is a double coat. <laughs> so there are these long guard hairs on top that shed off the snow. And then underneath, you have this soft, fluffy undercoat right next to their skin for insulation. Sounds cozy. Maybe another reason they look so calm is because they are high above any potential predators, like mountain lions. Yeah, well, mountain goats in particular can escape and find sanctuary thousands of feet above the elevation at which you'd find big cats. So yeah, I'd say they're pretty comfortable. <laughs> Overall, the mood is very peaceful. But let's look at another painting, also of two mountain goats, by a different artist that has a very different mood, and maybe one that's even more relatable to us. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, but I think we might need some help from Emily and Lizzie in order to do that.
This painting by Robert Bateman is titled Sheer Drop. First reactions, what stands out to you? Yeah, I would say that's a very appropriate name for this scene. <laughs> I mean, my first reaction is extreme vertigo. <laughs> um, you know, the goats are like standing on this really narrow ledge and this waterfall is crashing down in front of them. I don't know, everything looks really treacherous. <laughs> Yikes. Imagine yourself standing there. Oh, I mean, I would be standing perfectly still. <laughs> I mean, I would be completely petrified. But you know, yet again, here's another pair of goats that just seem you know, surprisingly calm. So I'm guessing that mountain goats must just have a completely different idea of what constitutes challenging terrain. Based on what I know about mountain goats, I would agree. Their hooves are perfect for navigating terrain like this. The hoof has a hard outer shell that allows them to edge along small little ledges of rock. And then the underneath side has soft, spongy foot pads that when pressed down, conform really well to the contours of the rock. It acts a bit like a suction cup. And farther up the back of the leg, you can see the dew claw that it acts like a brake. So if they start to slide on a loose or slippery surface, it stops them. Oh, wow. Okay, so their hooves are basically perfect for climbing around like this. But seriously, looking at this scene, I mean, even with great hooves like that, this is kind of ridiculous. Like, these goats look completely stuck. How the heck are they gonna get down? I've seen mountain goats and bighorn sheep, when they get in a tight spot like this, rear up on their hind legs and pivot facing the rock and keep pivoting till they're facing 180 degrees the other direction, then drop back down on all fours, no problem. And other people have seen them jump up in the air, switch directions and drop back down facing the way they want to go. Okay, that is completely wild. If you think that's wild, try doing it after eating psychoactive lichens, a favorite snack of mountain goats and bighorn sheep. Wow, okay, um, talk about the high life. <laughs> but I digress. Sheer Drop actually reminds me of this really high adrenaline image that was in an exhibition of National Geographic photos here at the museum a few years ago. Uh, the photograph was by Jimmy Chin of his friend Alex Honnold standing on what's known as the Thank God Ledge in Yosemite National Park. Alex Honnold, that guy from the movie Free Solo? The one who climbed all 3,000 feet of El Capitan without ropes? Yes, uh, the very same. <laughs> and this photograph was taken of him a few years before the movie came out. It was actually on the cover of Nat Geo in 2011. Okay, imagine Alex Honnold standing there. How would he feel? Yeah, my guess is that to him, this is easy. This is like standing on a sidewalk. <laughs> I mean, honestly, he may as well be a sheep or a goat. I, I bet he could even do that crazy 180 spin move. <laughs> Alex Honnold is an incredible climber. I wonder how old he was when he first started climbing. Yeah, at a program here in Jackson a few years ago, he said he started climbing when he was five years old. That is so young. I wonder if for people and for animals, Maybe the trick is you start when you're young, you keep doing it until it feels comfortable, and then it becomes second nature. Yes, totally. And you know, there is a painting in the museum's collection that illustrates that, that process you're describing perfectly. It's called Playground by the artist Laney. And in it, five bighorn sheep lambs are jumping around, playing around on these big boulders. But, you know, of course, I mean, they're, they're not just playing. They are learning and practicing skills on those rocks that they're gonna need to use for the rest of their lives. Lainey is a Wyoming artist, so I'm sure she has seen bighorn lambs playing like this. Yeah, you know, I feel like playing on boulders is a popular pastime for animals and humans around here. 
Right, every day when I drive home, I go past that bouldering park at the base of Snow King Mountain, and I see kids, human kids, playing and practicing on the features there. Someday those kids will, you know, head out into the mountains and climb some real peaks. But of course, they will need to keep practicing. You know, that, that learning process doesn't just stop. Uh, it's like Alex Honnold says, I expand my comfort zone by practicing the moves over and over again. I work through the fear until it's just not scary anymore. Oh man, looking at all these images of the mountains, even sort of uh, spooky images like this one, <laughs> it's really making me want to get into the Tetons. Carrie, you're a climber. Would you be willing to take us up into Grand Teton National Park and show us some mountain goat moves? I would love to. And actually, I have a friend who's a guide here who I think could really help us out. Except um, I don't want to try the jumping pivots. I don't have the right hooves for that. <laughs> My name is Riley Jordan. I'm a senior guide at Jackson Hole Mountain Guides, and I guide in the rock, alpine, and ski disciplines. I've been working in the Tetons for almost a decade and climbing around the world for about 22 years. Today we're here in beautiful Grand Teton National Park, just a short 30 minute drive from the museum, and we are gonna go do some multi-pitch rock climbing. Riley, thanks for bringing us all the way up here. My pleasure. But I have to say, this is not my natural habitat. What do you do to stay safe up here? Well, there's a series of systems and different types of gear that we use to be able to attach ourselves to the mountain um, to help mitigate risk. If we were to, to fall, the idea is that we're, it's gonna catch us and we may fall some distance, but not off the mountain. And if we use those systems properly, then we can be fairly confident that we can, um, we can mitigate those risks. So how do these special shoes help you to stay on the rock? Yeah, these, these shoes have um, a special rubber that's actually fairly sticky, um, and it allows it to grab onto the rock a little bit better. And so we're able to stand on small edges, um, with just using the texture of the rock, even though there may not be an edge. Um, and there's a variety of, uh, you know, of, of different techniques that we use with the shoes to help stay on the wall. So all of this gear that people have invented certainly helps, but still our bodies are very different from mountain goat bodies. How do you stay on the rock and keep moving upward? Part of that is conditioning. Um, I think the best type of conditioning for rock climbing is rock climbing. Um, but there's a lot of different techniques that we use there as well, whether it's um, shoving our extremities into cracks to help hold onto the wall, or um, using small edges with those sticky rubber shoes. It's, it's all about technique and trying to be as efficient as we can without wasting energy. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is a lot of beginners think of rock climbing as being a lot of upper body strength, which th that does help. But our, our strongest muscle groups are in our legs. And so if we can utilize those, use our legs to climb and our arms maybe a little bit more for balance, um, that's gonna allow us to keep moving. Well, that is all great to know, but I'm still glad that it's you, not me, who's going up there today. <laughs> Carry on, belay. Belay on. Climbing. Climb on. So we made it back down safe and sound. That was a lot of fun. Um, what was your favorite part about the day? Oh my gosh, well, okay. I mean, once we got to the top, the view was so beautiful up there. And then there were times where it was a little tricky. Like there were some moves that were a little awkward, um, but it was really fun. It was challenging. 
here's what I'm wondering. I, I feel like climbing can feel like this really personal experience and I would love to know why you like to climb. My favorite part about rock climbing is that it's fairly meditative and that when I'm climbing, it's somewhat of an escape where I can really just, all I can do is focus on what's around me. So Ryla, I have a question yeah. for you. Do you ever get frightened or scared up there? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, nerves are, are a good part of rock climbing that help keep us in check. And that's why we double and triple check our systems. And I think having a, a healthy amount of, of fear, if you will, um, is a good thing. And it, that it makes us a safer uh, climber. You sound so just, I don't know, calm and confident when you talk about it. You know, like you, you belong up there, like right with the goats and the sheep. Do you feel just like, do you feel totally comfortable up there? For the most part, yes. I mean, I feel very much in my element and just moving through rock and, um, you know, moving through different sequences and being able to see the sequence ahead of me and, and know in my mind before I get there what I want to do and how I'm going to move through that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it is pretty interesting to, to be present. You know, uh, a, a lot of people, you know, come to this place and just fall in love with, you know, climbing and exploring in the Tetons. And I, I want to know, you know, from your perspective, someone who spends so much time up here, like, what is it about climbing in, in the Alpine, high in the Alpine, that's so special? For me, it's the vertical relief from the valley to the top of the mountains. I mean, it's pretty special for North America to have 7,000 vertical feet of, of rock jutting up out of the ground. Um, you know, a lot of places you're looking at big peaks from 9,000, 10,000 feet. And so they're, they're big and they're majestic and they're beautiful. But here we just have the grandeur of, of the, the Tetons that is special, to say the least. Yeah, no, you're so right. It's it's spectacular being out here. You know, it's it feels like you have to be really tough to be out here, but then also there's like all these really beautiful and tough, like delicate little plants everywhere and beautiful and tough, like little animals. And it, it, it's cool to be in a place where these, these things that might seem contradictory, you know, like tough and fragile, uh, uh, fear and safety, they, they all come together um, and coexist. No, that's, yeah, absolutely. I was thinking about that today. Humans have been exploring the Alpine for millennia and have developed a range of physical and psychological tools to do so without benefit of hooves or fur. Perhaps the thing that draws humans to climb mountains is the same thing that inspires artists. A search for meaning, for beauty, for fun, to challenge oneself, to gain a new perspective, or perhaps to learn more about the animals that call this beautiful, delicate and precarious place home. While humans might not be born on the side of steep cliffs, that's not stopped us from being drawn to them, both in life and in art.